let's make this Dollar Tree apple cart DIY. I'm using 18 of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting them brown using the color Burnt Umber. I'm only doing one coat because I wanna see some of the wood peeking through on some of the blocks. Now I'm hot gluing all the pieces together to make a cart. For the long ends of the cart, I have two vertical pieces with two horizontal pieces in between. Then I'm gluing another two horizontal pieces and another vertical piece on the end. I made two identical sections for both sides of the cart. And now to connect them together, I'm gluing two horizontal blocks on either end. Now I'm hot gluing both sides of the cart together. For the base of the cart, I'm using a piece of cardboard and I'm just tracing my cart and cutting out the cardboard to make sure it's the right size. I'm also painting this piece of cardboard with the same brown paint and I'm hot gluing the piece to the bottom of the cart. For the wheels, I'm using this construction vehicle and I'm hot gluing them onto the cart. I'm using this farmer's market calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut out two of the little squares on the back for this DIY, the orchard apples picture and the farmer's market one. I'm cutting the picture into two pieces to fit onto the blocks at the end of the cart and I'm using a glue stick to glue them on. I believe this is Spanish moss from the dollar store. I'm just filling my cart with it. I have this cute fall pick from Dollar Tree and I'll be using the little pumpkin and turning it into an apple by painting it red. I pulled out the stem before painting it and now I'm putting it back on. I have these little chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree along with this white chalk pen which I'm using to write apples for sale. This chalk pen was really thick, which I didn't really like, but I think it worked out okay. I'm placing my apples into the cart along with a couple of leaves and some greenery. I'm taking this little farmer's market picture from the Dollar Tree calendar and I'm going to be gluing it to the side of the cart. First, I'm cutting it into two sections that will fit onto the blocks. Then I'm using a glue stick to glue them on. Here is the finished apple cart. I think this turned out so cute, even though the painted pumpkins don't totally look like apples, but I still think it works. And you could totally turn this into a pumpkin cart and have a stack of pumpkins instead. This fall DIY is a tumbling tower block apple. I've seen these made into pumpkins a lot, but today we're gonna be making apples. First up is the smaller apple. I'm arranging nine blocks with three in the center, then two, then one on either side. And I'm hot gluing all the blocks together. Try to get them as straight and even as possible so you have fewer gaps between the blocks. Now I'm painting the apple red with the color Holiday Red. You could paint the blocks before you glue them all together if you wanted, but I found it super easy to paint them once they were all together, so that wasn't a problem. I'm now making the larger apple, and the only difference is the middle row has four blocks instead of three. I'm then repeating the same pattern as before, adding three blocks, then two, then one on either side of the middle row. And I'm hot gluing all of these together and painting them with the same red color. For the apple stems, I found this stick literally on the sidewalk as I was walking to my car one day, and I thought it would be perfect for this project. I'm cutting it down into two small stem pieces, one for each apple, and I'm hot gluing them to the tops of the apples. For a little more embellishment and fun, I'm adding a leaf to the larger apple. This is from a leaf garland I bought recently at Dollar Tree. And I'm also adding a piece of greenery from some Dollar Tree flowers. On the smaller apple, I'm gluing on these little orange and brown berries that were from one of the fall picks from Dollar Tree. 
and I'm also gluing on a little piece of greenery. Here are the finished apples. I think they are so cute. These would look so good on a fall tiered tray. My next fall DIY is this orchard apples sign. I'm starting with this Dollar Tree sign I used in a previous DIY that I took apart. You can still see the remnants of the paper that was glued on here before and the word relax that I had stenciled on. I tried getting as much of this off as I could, but at a certain point I gave up. It's okay though, because it will all be covered up. I'm using this farmer's market calendar from Dollar Tree and I'll be using this orchard apples page. I'm ripping it out of the calendar, which maybe wasn't the best idea, but the couple parts that got a little messed up will be covered up anyway, so it's all good. I'm cutting off the top and bottom borders from the picture, and I'm gluing those to the top and bottom of the sign. I'm also gluing the main image to the middle of the sign with a glue stick. I'm taking the excess parts of the pictures and folding them around to the back of the sign and gluing them in place. To cover up those top and bottom sections, I'm hot gluing a nice fall flower on top and filling the rest of the spaces with leaves. I'm also adding a couple of these little berry picks to either side of the sign. And that is our fall sign complete. The hanger was from the previous DIY I did with this sign. It's just a piece of nautical rope glued on. This DIY is a nature inspired cottage core fall pumpkin. And we are going to be using one of these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins and this sage green yarn. I'm hot gluing the yarn to the pumpkin, starting in the center on the top and going around in circles. This was pretty tedious to do, and at first I was being really careful, making sure to keep the strands of yarn close together so the orange doesn't show through. And I definitely got a little bit more lazy with it as it went on, so I will have to fix that. You could also paint the pumpkin first so you don't have to worry about that bright orange showing through. I'm taking more strands of yarn and hot gluing them in the gaps to cover that orange. I picked off as much of the hot glue remnants as I could and now I'm adding this pretty lace ribbon onto the pumpkin. I'm gluing one end of the ribbon on the bottom of the pumpkin, then wrapping it around the pumpkin and gluing the other end on the bottom. I'm adding another piece of lace ribbon perpendicular to the other piece, then two more ribbon pieces in a crisscross fashion. I have this little pumpkin stem from another Dollar Tree pumpkin and I'm painting it brown. I have these Dollar Tree florals that I cut and I'm gluing them to the top of the pumpkin. I love these flowers. They definitely have that vintage cottage core vibe. I glued the stem on top and my pumpkin is complete. DIY is this pretty cottage core hexagon pumpkin. I'm using this super cute gift box and I'll just be using the lid for this DIY. I'm starting by sanding the top of this gift box lid because there is a bit of glitter on the bees and the flowers. I'm using this acrylic paint by Deco Art in the color Spiced Pumpkin and I'm covering the hexagon lid with it. This took several coats to cover the design but I love how it turned out. This color is so pretty. I'm taking four of these letter tiles from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be turning them into the stem for the pumpkin. I'm hot gluing them all together, making sure the letters are facing inward. Now I'm painting my stem brown and hot gluing this to the top of the hexagon lid. I'm taking these Dollar Tree flowers and I'll just be using the greenery for this DIY, hot gluing them to the pumpkin behind the stem. I'm using this lace ribbon and making a bow to glue on the front to give the pumpkin more of a vintage cottage core look. The next DIY is this nature inspired fall wreath. 
I'm using this grapevine wreath from Dollar Tree and this berry garland. To make it more fall themed, I'm going to paint all the little white berries with this spiced pumpkin paint from DecoArt. While my berries dry, I'm going to add these fall florals, sticks, and pine cones to the wreath by sticking them through the wreath, then folding over the stems in the back. Now I'm taking this berry garland and wrapping it around the whole wreath. I'm also using this hanging plant pot sign and I'll be using it to create a sign for my wreath. I took off one of the little plaques from the hanging sign and I'm painting it orange, then lightly distressing it by dry brushing on some brown paint over top. I cut out the word welcome with my Cricut with black vinyl and I'm sticking it on to my little orange sign. I'm using this burlap ribbon from the hanging plant sign and using it to attach the welcome sign to the wreath. And this is my finished nature themed fall wreath. This fall DIY is a red truck coming back from the pumpkin patch. For this DIY, I'm using a wood truck from Dollar Tree, and I had used this truck for a DIY in the spring, so I'm gonna paint over all the blue with this red acrylic paint. I'm leaving the wheels and the box of the truck the same colors I had them before. To make the box of the truck, I'm using 18 of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting them brown. I'm now arranging them all to form the box of the truck, then hot gluing them together. Now it's time to attach the box to the truck with some hot glue. I want to make this truck more sturdy, so I'm hot gluing two tumbling tower blocks onto the truck behind the wheels. These blocks are from Dollarama and they're much bigger than the Dollar Tree ones. To make the truck stand up on its own, I'm taking one of the smaller tumbling tower blocks and gluing it on top of one of the larger ones to form a T. Then I'm gluing that to the bottom of the box. I have this farm fresh calendar from Dollar Tree and I cut out this thankful and blessed picture with the pumpkins from the back of the calendar. I'm sticking this onto the door of the truck with the glue stick. I have these little pumpkins that I previously painted red to turn them into apples and now I'm turning them back into pumpkins for this DIY with this spiced pumpkin acrylic paint from DecoArt. This cute little fall pick is from Dollar Tree and I'm using the pumpkin for the back of my truck. I painted it with the same orange paint and I also painted the stem brown. I'm now placing my little pumpkins in the truck including the two I painted and this cream colored one from Dollar Tree that came like this. And here is my fall truck complete. This DIY is a fall centerpiece perfect for Thanksgiving. I have this box from Dollarama. It had three drawers in it and I took those out. I'm taking this brown acrylic paint and mixing it with water to make a stain, then covering the wood box with it. I have these two gourds from Dollar Tree along with these three little pumpkins and I'm painting all of them with this white chalk paint from DecoArt. This took many coats to cover the gourds since they were so orange, but I love how they turned out. I have this beautiful metallic paint in the color Champagne Gold from DecoArt, and I'm painting all the gourd and pumpkin stems with it. Now I'm making the vinyl letters to go on my centerpiece. I'm writing out the words Harvest Blessings with one of my favorite fonts from Defont.com, 
Hello Honey. I'm also inserting a couple of leaf SVGs. Select everything and attach it together. I cut out the words and leaves separately because I was using up smaller pieces of vinyl that I had on hand. And now I'm sticking my vinyl decals onto the box. I weeded out the leaves as stencils and I'm using acrylic paint to fill them in. When I was weeding out Harvest, a couple of the lines got broken, but instead of recutting it, I'm taking a black pen and just filling in the missing lines. I'm reattaching the stems to the pumpkins and the gourds. I'm filling the box with Spanish moss, then adding in the gourds and pumpkins. I'm filling all the empty spaces with fun, colorful fall leaves. And here is our Thanksgiving fall centerpiece complete. This DIY is a pretty thankful sign. To start with, I'm creating the letters on Cricut Design Space. First, I'm making a box the same size as my sign, and I'm adding a circle at the top where the pumpkin cutout is so I know exactly how big to make my letters. I'm typing out the word thankful, and I want it to be vertical on the sign, so I'm pressing enter after every letter. I'm resizing the word to fit on the sign. Then I'm changing the alignment of the letters to the center. Then I'm ungrouping the word so each letter is separate. Then deleting the letter A. These leaves were free on Cricut, and I'm inserting them into my project, then ungrouping them and deleting all the leaves except for one. This leaf is meant to be scored, and that's not what I want for this project. So I'm clicking on the I next to the word score on the right, and that removes the scoring element. I'm moving the leaf over to replace the A in the word thankful. I'm deleting the box and the circle, then selecting all the letters and the leaf and clicking on attach. You can see if I click on make it now, the word is way too long for a standard Cricut mat. If you only have the 12 by 12 mat like I do, I'll show you what I do to fix this. I'm going back and clicking undo to unattach all the letters. Now I'm selecting the first part of the word thankful and attaching that, then selecting the last part of the word and attaching that section together. Now when I click make it, everything fits on one mat. Since I'll be using these letters as stencils, I don't want them this close together, so I'm separating the two sections a bit then cutting it out with my Cricut. I got this wooden sign with the pumpkin cut out at the top from Dollar Tree. I'm weeding out the letters and sticking them onto the sign. Even though the word is split into two parts, it's super easy to line them up on the sign. I'm using these four colors for my sign. I have this red paint from Dollar Tree, these two colors from DecoArt in the shades Raw Sienna and Spiced Pumpkin, and the shade Mustard Yellow from CraftSmart. I'm painting each letter, alternating with each of the colors. Now that I've painted all the letters, I'm peeling off the vinyl. For the last bit of detail on the sign, I'm taking this little fall pick from Dollar Tree and hot gluing it to the top of the sign. And here we have our finished, thankful sign perfect for Thanksgiving or any time in the fall season. Mm -hmm.